Hey everybody, Pastor Jason here with you. We're going to do something a little different for these next two weeks worth of devotions. We are reaching back into 2015 when our pastor, Jeremiah Hosford, preached a powerful word. I mean a powerful word on the kingdom of God. We are ushering in something incredible in this season. We are advancing the kingdom in a particular way. And I think it, it behooves us to make sure that we have a grasp on what that kingdom is and what it means to us. And so I would love for you to take a few minutes, just sit back and listen to our lead pastor, Jeremiah Hosford, as he brings a word about the kingdom of God. Be blessed. Ephesians chapter four, this is going to be part three, part three of the kingdom of God. And we're going to uh, just get into his word today. And uh, the Lord's got something to say. Amen. Verse one, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you. In other words for that is beg you, exhort you, encourage you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended. What does it mean? but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Uh, uh, part three today of the kingdom of God, I want to preach a, a message, preach somewhat teach a message called unity in the kingdom, unity in the kingdom. Let's pray. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity. I ask you today, bless the reading and the preaching of your word. Father, today anoint me to preach and teach it. Anoint your people to hear, receive, and understand it. I ask you today, Holy Spirit, use this word so that our roots can grow down and our fruit can come up. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, move powerfully during this time. Look upon my availability, not my ability today. Grant me the words to speak from the very throne room of heaven. And I decree and declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand with all power, boldness, authority, and accuracy. In Jesus' name, I decree the yokes are destroyed. Chains are broken. Mindsets that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God are broken down now in Jesus name and father I thank you for this now be glorified in all that is said and done in the church that agrees shout amen. amen look at two or three people and tell them unite with me brother or unite with me sister come on tell them amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord today now I just want to just take just a brief moment if you will allow me to just somewhat recap or just give you the underlining theme of this series. Now, I really believe that the goal behind this series, what God has put in my heart, 
The goal behind this series is for us to be so immersed with the revelation and the understanding of the kingdom of God that when the nonsense of the kingdom of this world tries to invade our lives, we would immediately notice it. I, I believe that it isn't that I believe some believers are, 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 have, are mixing the kingdoms, if you'll allow me to say that, not because they want to, but because they don't know what they're doing. And if you've been so indoctrinated by the kingdoms of the world and you have not given yourself to not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you don't even know when you are giving yourself to the kingdom of Satan. Now, I use the kingdom of Satan and kingdom of the world is the same thing because the Bible says that he is the God of the air. He's the God of this world. You need to understand that. What I mean that by that is it is it's interchangeable right there. So I, I, I want to say that before I get into teaching this today. Now, watch this. It, listen, if we, if we will allow our thinking and our minds to be renewed by the wisdom of God, we will no longer be influenced and swayed by the agenda of hell. Hell has an agenda. Say amen to that. Heaven has an agenda. Hell's agenda is to take as many people to hell as it can. Heaven's agenda is to take as many people to heaven as it can and the kingdom of God manifest on the earth. Say amen to that. This is, hell's got an agenda, heaven's got an agenda. And we are the only way that we can get to a point that we're no longer swayed and influenced by the agenda of hell is to be immersed in the kingdom of God. To have a revelation, to have an understanding of this. Now watch this. Praise God. To have a knowledge and a revelation of the kingdom of God that empowers us and guides us in our decision making, in our actions and in our behaviors. Now I just said something. I'm doing this to set this up. So stay with me. Give me 10 minutes. I ain't going to quit preaching in 10 minutes, but give me 10 minutes to set it up. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Now, that means that if I am the Lord's, if, I've, if I have surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, that means that his kingdom, his kingdom, uh, it, 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 it defines how I act. It defines how I function. It defines how I parent. It defines how I lead my kids and how I guide my kids. It defines how we lead this church and how we, how we uh, flow as a body of believers. The kingdom of God defines these things. I might be in the world, but I am not of the world. That means that I no longer can allow the world to define my marriage anymore. I no longer can allow the world to define how I'm going to raise my kids. Uh, Miley Cyrus ain't going to tell me what I'm going to do with my young ones. And, and, and the government ain't going to force feed it through the school system. And, and God bless Barack, uh, President Barack Obama, but he is not going to define how I, uh, how I function. The kingdom of God, who I belong to, is going to define, guide, and lead my decision-making process. Now, this is the kingdoms that are at war right now. And so that means that when I get ready to make a decision, I need to see what does the kingdom of God say about this? I, I, I need to see what does the Lord have to say about this? When, whether it's my finances or what, whether it's my job, whatever it is, what does God have to say about this? You can't mix both kingdoms. These two war against one another. The principles and the inner workings of these two kingdoms are complete opposite. The kingdom of this world tells you to focus on yourself and self-preservation. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a dirty word in the church. It's about to come out. Y'all get ready. Go on, just film or whatever you're going to do. Watch this. The kingdom of this world tells you to focus on self and self-preservation. The kingdom of God is always pushing you to get your mind off of yourself and put it on God and put it on others. Here's the dirty word. It teaches self-denial. There, no, there is no following after Jesus Christ without self-denial. 
denying yourself. Jesus said, he who comes after me must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow after me. There in the kingdom, there must be self-denial. Glory be to God. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. This world and its system and its ways of thinking tells us to live for today and to do everything for the here and now. Whatever makes me happy now, this is what I do. Whatever's good for me today, this is what I do. I love John Bevere's new book out, Good or God, because not everything that is good is God. Mm. We're not going to go any further than that. Now stay with me. The kingdom of God tells us that our lives on this earth is but a vapor. And everything we do, we do it for eternity. So it might not feel good now, but it's going to be good later. I might might have to go without right now, but I'm going to have plenty later. I, I might have to deny my desires now, but there's a day when I'm up in eternity with Jesus Christ and I step through heaven that everything that I stored up is going to be given unto me. We must live our lives with eternity in mind. Glory be to God. So I'm investing in eternity. I mean, I'm investing in eternity. I'm storing up my riches in eternity. I'm living my life with eternity in mind. And I said all this to bring you to this understanding. These two kingdoms are opposite of one another. So when I talk about unity in the kingdom, when I talk about unity in the kingdom, I want you to understand that it's coming from a revelation of the word of God. And it might not be, it might not feel good to you. And it might not be what you've been taught all your life. And it might even contradict some of the stuff that you've been taught all your life. But the Bible says, let God be true and let every man be a liar. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I want you to understand that today. Now, let me just go a little longer to set it up. Unity is so powerful in a group of people that God, watch this, can, can completely have nothing to do with that group and they still succeed. Right. Now, I, I know some of you are like, what pastor are you blaspheming? No, I'm not. Stick up Genesis chapter 11, please, ma'am. Now watch this. I want to show you how powerful unity is. Now, the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks, bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down. Who came down? The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, who said? The Lord Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Now, if a group of godless people, if the Lord can say this about a group of godless people, then imagine what God can do about with those who are called by his name and are a part of the blood. Imagine what the Lord can do with those who say God is our God. Jesus is our savior. We're one mind, one heart, one direction, one speech, and we're going to do it for the kingdom of God. Imagine what God can do. If nothing can be withheld from them, imagine what's possible for us. Glory be to God. Now, stay with me right here. I want to just point something out real quickly to you. This is not what I'm teaching from. They had one language. One language. Um, now, we don't all have the same language in, in, the, in the natural, but think about if we all spoke the same in the spiritual. 
Imagine if when I stood up and said, when we have thousands of churches, everybody in the room agreed with me instead of three or four said, that ain't going to never happen. Imagine if everybody had the same language in this place right here. And when, when, when things were being spoken in the spirit, folks said, amen to that pastor. And I'm going to continue to walk with it. I'm going to continue to believe it. I'm going to continue to speak it. Nothing, nothing will be withheld from us. Glory be to God. If a group of godless people, if the Lord will say that about a group of godless people, what will he say about those who are the redeemed? Let me give you just a couple more examples before we go to Ephesians. Jesus said that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Then he said a house divided against itself will not stand. Beloved, I've noticed that the church's worst enemy is itself. Now, I just said something. Do you understand that Satan can only do things in the church what the church lets him do? I have found that when out, when it, if there's an outside entity that attacks the church, it never makes the church weaker. It makes the church stronger. I have found that when persecution comes against the church, the church never weakens, the church strengthens. Matter of fact, the first church in the book of Acts was built off of the blood of, of people who were persecuted. And it strengthens the church. But I have found that when division comes in the church, it weakens the church because two halves do not make a whole. Anytime you have a hole and you break it in half, that means there's a place. This is what I feel the Holy Spirit told me yesterday. You have now given room for Satan to have a place. Now I want this to sink for a minute. Would you please put up Romans chapter 16? We're going to go to Ephesians in just a moment. Now, watch this. Let's listen to what the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says. I urge you, brethren... To note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. One translation says, and put them out. Do you know the only other time that he's talking about putting folk out of church is with the sexually immoral? So... They, it, it, they, it's like the, the sexual immoral is being put up there right beside where division is. And avoid them or put them out. This is how serious God sees unity in the church. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10 says we are to speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, that you are perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So he's saying not only do are you going to speak the same thing, but I want you to have the same mind, not that you're a robot, not that you're giving up your individuality. But what mind are we to have the mind of Christ? He said that you have the same mind and that you have the same judgment. Amen, pastor, Amen. that you have the same judgment. Now, why was the apostle Paul saying this? Because he was, listen, he was about to write some heavy stuff in first Corinthians. He was about to tell them to put some folk out of the church. He was about to correct them on some other things. He was about to correct them on the Lord's table. They were coming before the Lord's table in an unworthy manner, treating it like they want to treat people getting drunk, people eating without other people. And the apostle Paul says, now I'm about to fix some stuff. I'm about to correct some stuff. But before I do it, I need you to understand there's got to be unity in the church because if there's unity in the church, it don't matter what happens. The hell can come against us. People can come against us. But the church is going to stand because we're united under the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. Say amen to that. Yeah. Glory be to God. Now watch this. So he talks about, he talks about there being unity in the mind, unity in our speech, unity in judgment, but there needs to be unity in the spirit. That means that 
That means that you have to be united. You have to be united in a spiritual matter, in a spiritual sense. That means that just because you don't say it don't mean you ain't feeling it. And sometimes just because you ain't saying you're divisive, you've got a divisive spirit. And a divisive spirit clouds up the kingdom. Amen. And a divisive spirit, it, 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 uh, it grieves the Holy Ghost. So we got we to gotta get to a place that not only, it, it's one thing to have the maturity not to say it, but we need to let the Holy Ghost go do something inside of us that says fix the inside too, Holy Spirit. I, I fix what's going on in me because I don't want to be divisive. I don't want to be in division. I want to be people who, I want to be someone who's in unity. Hey everybody, Pastor Jason back here with you. What a powerful word we received from our lead pastor, Jeremiah Haas for today. I hope that you are blessed and I hope that you will carry this word and not just be a hearer of this word, but be a doer of this word as well. I pray a blessing over you, over your house, over everything that pertains to you today. I pray that the Lord would be with you that the Lord would keep you, that he would cause his face to shine upon you, that the Lord would be gracious to you, and that he would give you his peace. Now go out and make this the best day ever. God bless you. We'll see you back. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Life devotional series. These devotions are available across many platforms, including our Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at We Are ALRC for this and other great content. If you are in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas, we would love for you to come visit one of our campuses. You can find all the information you need at AbundantLifeChurch.com. My name is Jennifer, I am Overflow, and I am Abundant Life Church.